I go to the supermarket at least twice a week, for, um, but usually more about four or five times a week because I don't tend to do big shoppings. I tend to grab what I need for the next couple of days over the um, on my way home from work or something like that. If I had the means, then I would definitely go to large supermarkets more often, like Asda. Lisa and I used to make it a Sunday thing that we'd walk to Asda and back again. It's about an hour there and an hour back with heavy goods, and um, it was um, quite a, a chore. But then we always discovered through that that actually a lot of things happened between here and the marina on Sundays in Brighton. And it was quite exciting because we felt for, for a minute that we kind of were experiencing what it's like outside of our flat, which was nice. I always start with the vegetables and fruit, go around, because it was a bit of a budget issue being a Brighton bohemian type person. So I'll go to the vegetable section and I'll pick all of the vegetables that I really want because they tend to be most expensive because I guess they're the, what, what's the word I'm looking for perishable goods so go to the perishable goods get the good stuff and then I probably go to the fridge section and get all the like cheese type stuff and then I probably go for the dried goods you know like your rice your pasta and then like the luxury items like booze and then and this is the truth I go to the freezer section and pick a, a couple of things that I might need in the event of like a nuclear holocaust just in case what happens is I go into the shop, I pick up usually something like an onion, maybe a, a, you know, a courgette, maybe a few vegetables, because that's the kind of first thing that you see. And then I go around the corner, I look for the cheese, and at that point, I, it just happens pretty much every time, at that point I realise I, I need a basket, so I have to go back and get a basket, because I always forget to get the basket. So I put the stuff in the basket, and then I go back to where the cheese is, and I spend a little while on the cheese, because there is... Possibly, it's the most important part of the shop for me, the cheese. Looking to see what the best deal is, how I can basically get the most cheese for the smallest amount of money. And when, you, when you're considering cheese, is to think about the strength of the cheese as well. Because if you, you might get a lot of cheese, but it's like weedy, weak cheese. So you, you have to put loads of it on your food to get that cheesy, cheesy goodness. So you kind of have, there's a ratio between you know, the cost, the amount of cheese and the strength of the cheese that has to be considered. My girlfriend buys all the food in the house. I don't usually go on big shops. She actually go, I go out of my mind, so I usually just zip off to the magazine section while she buys all the food. And then I go home and fairly disappointed about what she's bought because I didn't put in more input at the time, you know? It's like, why didn't you get sausage rolls? And she, you know, she's got onions. I usually start from one. And then like zigzag out of it, like go up, around, down, around, up, around, down, through the shop. If it's an aisle, I know that there's nothing on that I want, then I miss it. I like to stick to the order of the aisles as they are, which means, <laughs> rather illogically, I'd start in the gardening section. <laughs> Occasionally, though, once you get to halfway, you do start kind of diagonally going back and forth if you remember something or forget something. And then at the end, when we're in the ice cream aisle, we finish by going back and putting back everything that we think might be too heavy for us to walk home with on our backs. So, yeah, garden stuff first, ice cream last. After the cheese, I tend to go uh, uh, to the tin section and buy uh, tins of tomatoes, uh, baked beans, uh, sometimes tuna fish, uh, and, then, and then pasta as well, because that's in a similar section, there's all pasta, pasta and rice and things like that. I never take lists to supermarkets. I really should take lists to supermarkets, it would make it a lot easier, but it, it's, uh, it sort of overrides that, the, the element of surprise, you know? You never know what you might see and go, oh, this is brilliant. If you just got a list, you're missing out all the other things that you could be buying, you know, or things that you don't, you wouldn't usually go for. So you're looking at the, the beans and you see next to the bean, you know, a couple of, you're walking down, you would you usually just go straight to the beans. But then further up in the aisle, you may have missed some other amazing, almost bean-based product that you haven't tried, but you probably go for anyway. And then they might change your life. Some, somewhere along the road. When you've got time to waste, 
and you're just kind of browsing, you usually find something like, oh, I've never had that. That would be nice. Or you find things and think, oh, I could put that on my chicken. That would be nice. When I was a student and I used to shop on a budget, I used to organise everything into piles of a pound, of one pound. So if I knew that something was 50p and then something, and I was weighing vegetables and I knew everything came to a pound, I keep that in a separate area and that was one pound's worth of stuff so that by the end I could say, yes, I've got seven pounds worth of things. And always um, round up as much as possible so that you always undercut. After the, the drinks, I usually then go back over the whole shop to see if anything else inspires me because I always try to do it quickly and then think, oh, I look at my basket and think, oh, I haven't really got enough food here. So I go back and I'm, I usually go, oh, the eggs, because I always forget about eggs. And they're in a place that you don't see easily on your first trip round. But the second time round, oh, the eggs, of course, so I get some eggs. Um, and then I usually look at the meat that I kind of ignore because it's expensive and really double check. Do I, do I want to fork out for some sausages maybe or a bit of bacon? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And then, and then I get in the queue. And I, when I'm in the queue, it's at that point I start remembering all the things that I should have got. Either that or be tempted by, by the, the discount Jaffa cakes that are, that are cleverly placed near, near the checkout area. It's just so easy to grab them off the shelf. Take those Jaffa cakes, put them in your basket. You know you shouldn't, but you do it anyway. Finally, some, some chewing gum. That's the final thing that you get. Because you get that out, actually out of the checkout. Obviously, tins and like liquid goods have to go only so many of them in one carrier bag. Otherwise, when you're walking back, then you might end up putting like your shoulder out or something. So you have to sort of a couple of tins, then some vegetables, then some light stuff in increments that look like they're about a carrier bag's worth. That's my system. At self-service, um, if you get the ones which are in, in the bigger supermarkets, which are like a self-service thing, and then the stuff goes down a conveyor belt and it goes down to the end, and you're still paying at one end, you've got all your stuff lying at the other end, maybe about four or five feet away, um, and you finish and you pay, and then you go to bag it, you th then the other person doesn't know whether to start or not because their, their stuff, their first items, are going to come down the aisle towards you. And I always thought this was a bit of a problem. Um, and also, you know, should, you know, should I be quicker with my bagging because they are, you know, they're obviously waiting and some of them are nice and they wait and they, I don't want to mix up our shopping. Well, it's not really nice and they just don't want me to steal their Eden sprouts. But then I realised they have these special bars that actually you, they use as separators for people who have just paid at the end of the at the other end, and so when you have your shopping your shopping at the bottom and someone else is starting, you can put up this bar and it deflects and keeps everything in. And I was amazed. I never knew what that bar was for. I just thought it was one of those kind of random bars <laughs> that you get in kind of industrial looking machinery. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention. The very first thing that you see coming into the shop is the bit with all the discount stuff. So I always have a look there first. I do like to buy things on the cheap. So that's like my favourite bit because you might be surprised by something. You might go, oh, a chocolate mousse that you'd never normally have bought, but it's 10p, so you think, oh, I'll get that. Or, or some, you know, some cheese often is cheap. Or like, you know, there's all kinds of things. You can never, you can never predict what's going to be in there. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a pickle treat variety pack. Um, lucky dip, that's what I mean. Lucky dip. So lucky, it's a lucky dip situation. Um, yeah. And then I take it all back home and put it in my fridge.